Hello again, Saber fans. Today, I want to do a quick tutorial on how to build and assemble your own uh, custom day blades for your lightsabers. So I've shown them off in my videos before. Um, so I've got quite a few. I've got my photon blade here. Um, we've got you know, our reds and blues. Um, and I, I highly recommend uh, ordering just the parts from the custom saber shop. So today, we're actually going to do this yellow one. Uh, so I have just the empty tube and then the tip. And I'm gonna show you how to kind of prep this uh, and then add this cellophane. Um, and so let me kind of step out here. So ideally you want a flat surface that's at least about five feet um, by however long your blade is. Uh, but with the work from home uh, situation going on with COVID-19 right now, um, my kitchen table is being confiscated, so uh, this is going to have to uh, do. So I'm going to lay it out here, and I'll show you what that looks like um, in just a moment. So the first thing that you'll need to do, uh, or at least I recommend doing, is on the inner surface of your t blade tip, you see where I've scratched that? Essentially, I just take my handy little hobby knife and just give little light scratches all around. And then you want to do that on the inside of your blade uh, as well, just on the inside there, uh, about as deep as your blade tip will go. And the reason you want to do that is because whatever heat adhesive that you use, um, I just use super glue, uh, but I, I've heard some people will prefer the Gorilla Glue super glue. Um, that actually works uh, pretty well too. There's two things that you need to do after that before you glue it. So the Custom Saber Shop um, tips, they've got this mirror, but there's also a film on the mirror which protects it uh, until you're ready to actually um, glue it in. And I recommend removing that because even though it's a little clear film, it will diminish some of the light that gets reflected back. So you want to do that. The other thing that you want to do, especially if you cut this yourself, so uh, for this particular blade, I paid the extra 50 cents uh, for them to cut it down to a 36 inch blade. Normally they are 40 inches long. Uh, and for most of my other blades, I cut them myself. But what that does is it causes a lot of the uh, little powder and shavings and things, because I just use a hacksaw uh, to get into the blade. So you want to look down the blade and make sure that there's no um, little particles. And what I recommend is getting kind of string. I, I just have some fishing line here with a screw um, tied onto it. Uh, on the other end I have some foam. You can use some uh, material, um, preferably things that do not leave any particles themselves. So I don't recommend using paper towel, uh, tissue paper, anything like that. It's going to leave little particles. But you just dip that, drop that in, shove that in right there. And then on the other end, you just want to pull out your screw. You just pull that through. Now, if you're cutting it yourself, you may need to do this several times. Um, I've even had to get this uh, just a little damp and, and run it through a couple times to catch all of those. But since I actually paid the 50 cents to get this cut myself, it doesn't have any of those particles. That's actually the benefit, in my opinion, uh, to do actually doing that. So once you've got uh, your scoring on both your blade uh, and your blade tip, you've removed that film from the mirror, uh, and then you've got um, the, the particles out of here, you want to glue that. So I'm going to do that real quick. And what I recommend, I'm actually going to do this just off, off camera, but you want to put the glue on the tip. You don't want to put the glue in here because if you do this, and some of it leaks, it's going to leak all the way down your blade, and you don't want that. So just put some on the inside of your tip, and then cap it. So I just applied some super glue on the outside there, and then I just put this in. Now, this sometimes does not line up perfectly, because hopefully it's a good fit, uh, and with your scoring it should create some friction. Uh, friction. So what I recommend is just you know, giving it a good push, and you'll see sometimes that it does go on uneven. Uh, what I recommend then is just to put it down on the ground and push. And I'll go ahead and do that and set this aside for the next part. Alright, so I got it to snap in evenly. And so for now, we're going to set this aside and move on to our cellophane. 
So, so far I've done about a dozen blades. Uh, I think this is probably about my dozenth. Um, and I have not had to buy any more than one roll of uh, cellophane. Uh, I got this from Michael's. I'm sure you can get it in any hobby store. Uh, it's 40 inches long, so that's plenty of length for any blade. And then I got it for 100 feet. Um, this was $15. Uh, and again, making about a dozen blades, got my money's worth out of this. So what you want to do, uh, I always put it back in the plastic when I'm done so that it doesn't attract particles because this is very staticky. It will pick up dust. So I'm going to take the plastic side. And on that note, when you do uh, get your surface, you want to actually wipe it down with something, again, that does not leave particles itself. So some kind of uh, either uh, dust-free dry wipe or even uh, wiping it down uh, with a wet washcloth uh, and then letting it air dry. And so you'll notice, too, or I actually don't know if you can, but you want to make sure that the edges that you're going to use have no jagged edges. And that can be difficult with, um, with cutting it with the scissors, and I'll show you what to do if that happens. But let me get this out full length. So I'm going to hop over this gap here, just kind of stretch it over the two tables. All right, so ideally you want about four to five feet. So I'm going to take the, this edge here, and I'm actually going to pull this so that it hangs just a little over, over this edge. And now I'm going to come over here, and you want scissors that are going to cut very smoothly. And... So what you do, if you can, um, you just start at one end and try to get it cut evenly. And I'm actually going to, sometimes I can get this nice and even, but I'm actually going to leave some jagged edges intentionally so that I can show you what to do to, to fix that. So the reason you don't want those jagged edges um, so I'm not sure if you, you'll be able to see, um, I mean, this is so thin, you can't see it very well on camera, but essentially, those jagged edges, when, even when you roll it up and put it in your blade, light's going to bounce right off of those, and it will be very noticeable. But luckily, cellophane is very uh, terrible, so what you want to do is just go up on one end, snip a little bit, and then very carefully... You don't even need the scissors for this part. Very carefully pull along the straight line. And this might take some practice to do this. Like, for example, this uh, little piece came off uh, as I was going. So you just want to cut another thin piece. And again, you want to get this as straight as possible. And like I said, um, when you buy these in a roll, they're so much that you're going to have that you can do this, you can practice, um, you know, you don't have to worry about running out, uh, especially if you're just going to do a few blades. Like I said, I've done a dozen. All right, so you see this is getting a nice, nice even tear, no jagged edges. And then I'll just discard this extra. And now for the fun part. So I recommend getting probably a thicker dowel rod than this. Um, I just had this line around. I put a little bit of electrical tape around here to give it a little bit of a grip. But you need something to roll inside the wrap so that it actually will grip. Uh, and so if we do that over here. And don't worry about getting this part perfect. The main thing is you just want to get that rolled underneath and start rolling it. Sometimes it, you, you have to do it several times. Like I just, I had to pull this off again. So once it starts to roll, I just take this out because it actually becomes more of a hindrance than, than anything else. Um, and then I'll just roll And it's okay that it's loose. We're going to have to kind of adjust it. The main thing is you want to get it nice and rolled. Now 
And sometimes as you go, if you just want to look, make sure that there's no obvious hairs or particles that are, are being caught. So now you've got this big fat loose bit. So what you want to do now is you want to put your finger in here and just start rolling so that it will start rolling into itself. And you want to get a nice tight roll so that you can uh, get it in the blade. This is going to take me a moment, so I'm going to cut. So the, um, the tighter that you roll it initially, the less time this particular step takes. Um, I rolled mine kind of thick, so it took me a little while, but you just want to keep rolling that until it is smaller than the inner diameter of your blade. Uh, so once you get that, and the nice thing about this is you can pinch it and it doesn't leave a crease. Uh, so sometimes you'll need to do that, like I had to do that so that when I pulled my finger out it didn't come, the inside didn't come out. So once you do that, you just slide it right into the blade. And what you want to do is loosely get it all the way into the blade, all the way to the, the bottom of the tip. And sometimes what I do at this point, since it's not going all the way in, it's kind of getting crinkled. So you want to pull that out, kind of let it, let it kind of do itself. So what I do is I just do that and tap it down. And it might take a while, but you need to do that until uh, the top part's even. You see how that's not even? So let me work on that. So now that we have it flat and even, and it's all the way down to the tip. What you want to do is cut off this excess and what I do is I, I pinch it right at where it's going to be, pinch, and I actually pull that out. And very carefully with my other hand I'll put my, my uh, thumb right where I want to cut it. And then I just cut that excess off. And then again, to get it back down, you want to uncrinkle it and tap it down. And sometimes you might have just a little bit uh, sticking out, but in this case, that was perfect. So it does go down a little bit. Um, you could hot glue. I've actually got um, this red blade. I put a little bit of hot glue in there. I didn't hot glue the film itself. I was uh, make sure not to do that, but it goes almost up to it so that the film doesn't come out on its own. Um, I only did that on this one because I have it in an adapter so that this blade actually doesn't go all the way down to the LED, but for most blades you don't need to worry about that. I don't recommend hot gluing because you want it to kind of stay loose uh, and do that. And so that's our blade. And we've got our saber. Now the reason I went with yellow on this is because my son wants a yellow saber. We had been using a color disc, which I've done another video on that. I think the color disc looks great, um, but we really wanted to have this. It almost looks gold. You know, I love this color. Um, but we wanted to have that when his saber was off. And actually, even with the tri-white, it's a nice yellow in person. It's a slightly lime uh, yellow, so we're probably still going to use the color disc, um, but it looks, it looks right, and that's my tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and happy sabering.